Nobody makes a good cold weather sneaker and you basically have two options. A big, ugly winter snow boot or you freeze to death in your regular casual sneakers. So that's why this Shearling line sneaker might be the perfect winter sneaker. So what are these called? Well, they're called mugs because we all want a pair of Uggs that are nice and warm and cozy, but I wouldn't be caught dead in a pair of Uggs. And so I wanted to make a pair of manly Uggs, hence the name mugs. And fortunately, Goral was up to the task to make these mugs. So we're gonna cut them in half, run them through all of our tests to see if we actually did make the perfect cold weather sneaker. And like I said, this is a collaboration between myself and Goral. And if you have no idea who Goral is, they make, in my opinion, some of the most durable and well-built sneakers in the entire world. And that's partially due to their long tenured history of quality footwear, because Goral, if you don't know, started all the way back in 1936 when the Goral family began handcrafting footwear out of their small workshop near the family home in Poland. And to keep up with demand, they continued to hire, increase their skills and craftsmanship, grew the business, grew the employee base, and they took this small shop, and over the course of several decades and several generations, they established themselves as one of the, like I said, one of the best sneaker makers in the entire world. And then fast forward all the way up to 2018, when they moved their shop to their new, bigger Goral and Sons family workshop in Sheffield, where the fourth generation Goral, Dom, started taking more and more responsibilities as the commercial director. And that's about when I crossed paths with Dom from Goral in about 2020, when we, we started the white sneaker series because I cut apart the very famous common projects and exposed them for what they are, which was twice the price they should have been, the most overpriced sneaker that we'd ever seen. It caused a lot of hatred, I guess, towards towards us for that series. And that's like why we doubled down. I was like, let's see if this is actually true. Let's cut, cut apart all the best white sneakers and see if common projects are as overpriced as I thought. And during that series, we cut apart one of Goral's white sneakers. And in the, in the finale, where we reviewed all 12 of those sneakers we cut apart, we chose Goral as the absolute best built white sneaker that you could buy. And then in 2021, one, I cut apart a pair of Uggs, and like I said, I didn't like Uggs at all, but after doing that video, cut in half, learning about wool and some of the unique properties, I wanted a pair, but I refused to wear Uggs. So that's when we started that, that idea of making a pair of manly Uggs was bouncing around my head. And one day I was thrift shopping and I saw a really cool old vintage bomber jacket. And I was like, that's way too small for me, but that's cool. And I wonder if I could convince Goral to make a manly Ugg out of this thing. And the reason I was interested in Goral is because they were doing a series called Will It Shoe where they just took random stuff like basketballs, ramen noodles, all this stuff and tried to make shoes out of them. And I was like, they seem like they'd be perfect for the job, the best built sneakers. Plus they already have some expertise in making random uh, stuff into sneakers. So I hit up Dom, I was like, Hey, hear me out. What if I shipped you this jacket? You guys made me some manly Uggs. We make a little video out of it, just in a kind of a joking way to do a fun video. And Dom was like, yep, let's do it. Let's do this thing. And we post that video, it did really well. And surprisingly, a lot of people were like, we want that sneaker. We want a version of that because of how unique it was. And because there's no other Shearling line sneakers on the market that look as good as even that first rendition did. And I asked Goral, I was like, hey Dom, could we, could we do like a small batch of these out of some real Shearling and actually make these shoes a reality? And once again, Dom was like, yup, let's do it. But with an English accent. And that's when we released last year, around this time in 2022, the first mugs. And they sold out so fast. They sold out in like 23 hours and people fell absolutely in love with them. After they were sold out, we were getting DMs and emails all the time asking to re-release them. So we did another drop in February, sold out almost immediately again. And now in this year, 2023, we went back to the drawing board, improved some things, changed a little bit of the design based off of everyone's feedback. And so now we're releasing the Mugs 2.0. So what is this sneaker? Well, like I said, it's a collaboration between Rose Anvil and Goral. Goral makes the sneakers, I just designed them. Uh, they're called the Mugs 2.0. They weigh one pound, three ounces, and they retail for 325 pounds, which is about 400 US dollars. They're made in England, and the way that we positioned this was, you know, this is another one of the concept designs where instead of just making a random shoe, we, we attach a purpose behind it and a theory and a concept to really make a unique sneaker that hasn't been made or that is ava isn't available on the market. And so this concept was the perfect winter sneaker. And the goal was to make the Mugs 2.0 a winter sneaker that performed like a boot, was warm like a boot, had the materials and construction of a boot, and basically a winter boot disguised as a sneaker, almost like we were taking all the important aspects of a warm winter boot, cutting out all the fluff and condensing it down into a high top sneaker. 
which to me is, is so fun. I love the concept and I love doing these concept collaborations for this reason. And the most important aspect was it needed to be very warm. So that's why we decided to go with real shearling wool because it's straight up nature magic. It's nature's perfect insulator and it has all these really crazy properties. And wool is warmer than duck and goose down. It's lighter than fur, so you don't these don't end up weighing three pounds. It regulates temperature, so you can wear these in the fall and spring and not just the dead of winter. The lanolin that's in the wool naturally helps condition and protect the wool fibers. And that lanolin also helps the wool self-clean, which is very important because Wool is very absorptive. It absorbs water like crazy, and so on the inside of the, sh the shoe, it's gonna also absorb your sweat, which you would assume would lead to it being very stinky, but that lanolin and wool is just naturally bacteria resistant and self-cleaning, so it helps really cut down on the smell to where to a point where that's why Uggs rarely smell, because they're, they're natural wool. And almost as importantly, that wool is gonna absorb that sweat, and it's not just gonna stay there, because wool has a unique property. It evaporates the moisture trapped in the wool into the air seven times faster than synthetics. And as you probably noticed, synthetic materials on the inside of boots and shoes lead them to stink a lot faster. So you got all those benefits wrapped into one. It's also static resistant. Uh, water doesn't degrade the wool. And ounce for ounce, wool is stronger than steel. It's naturally UV resistant. And my favorite feature is it insulates even when it's wet. This is the craziest thing to me. So the inner core of wool fibers can absorb just under half of its own weight in moisture. And not until the wool is saturated at around 60% of its own weight will actually start to feel wet to the touch. So it, up until that 60%, you can't even tell it's wet. And since it retains 80% of its insulating value, even when wet, wool will keep you warm even if these get completely drenched. It's gonna be super heavy because it absorbs so much water, but it'll keep you nice and warm. And so and so that's what I mean by wool being this crazy nature magic material, because there's no synthetic materials that can match wool attribute for attribute. But what are the actual specs of this wool? Well, this is real shearling, which means the fibers, those wool fibers are attached to the leather. It's not like the cheaper wool where they take all the wool fibers, attach them to a fabric back, backer, and then glue it to leather. These hairs never got removed from the leather. It's all tanned together, and so they're attached to that leather really, really strong. So it's significantly stronger than just gluing wool fibers to leather. And that's why this hardly ever sheds. Like over the first few weeks, it's gonna shed with all the loose fibers, but it's not gonna shed nearly as much as cheap wool. And the cool thing is that leather that the wool is attached to is still 1.5 millimeters thick. So right in that sneaker thickness and the wool fibers are 10 millimeters long, right in that sweet spot, not too long, not too short. And these hides are sourced directly from Ireland and retanned in Poland, then shipped to England and then made into these sneakers. But how does it actually perform? Well, we did the cold test where we put an ice bag in each of these to see how well it retained the heat or the lack thereof. And as you can see, quite a bit of difference between a regular pair of like Vans compared to the Shearling line mugs. And we also wanted to do a, a water resistance test on this because we didn't waterproof these. I didn't, I didn't want these to be completely waterproof because if these were just solely a winter boot, you might want them waterproof, but I didn't want these just to be pigeonholed into winter. I wanted these to be able to be worn in fall and spring. And so I wanted them to be able to breathe. I didn't want everything to be sealed in like a plastic bag. And so we did the waterproof test. And as you can see, they do leak, but it takes a little while for that water to seep in through the threads and the stitching. And even when that water got into the inside, because of those unique properties of wool, it's even hard to tell if the water's gotten to the inside because you almost can't feel it when it's wet. But wool is not without its flaws because once it gets wet, it takes forever to dry. It takes so long to dry because it holds onto that moisture so well. The other problem is it absorbs so much water, they get really, really heavy. And like I said, they're not waterproof. They're just water resistant because I wanted to keep them breathable so you could wear them in not just one season, but all three seasons, three of the four. And maybe the final flaw is shearling is just never gonna be quite as strong as reg regular leathers. So that's why we reinforce the most important parts with one of my favorite leathers in Horween's Chrome Excel. And we reinforce the toe, the collar, the pull tab, the heel stay, and the counter cover on the outside. Um, it takes 89 different processes to tan Chrome Excel and 29 working days to make it. It's super saturated because they shove so many oils and waxes and compounds into the leather that it's naturally water resistant and it barely needs conditioning. And this Chrome Excel is 1.5 millimeter thick, which is right in that right sneaker thickness. But the cool thing is it's double layered in some of these spots. So you end up with three millimeters of thickness around your foot, which is gonna make it more durable, more insulating. And there's one thing that Goral does that you rarely, rarely see in other sneakers. And that's the use of a leather lasting board or a leather insole. And because most sneakers, even at this price point, use fiberboard. And it's not that fiberboard's that bad of material, especially at lower prices, but it's just not nearly as durable. And over time it can split and crack and separate. And 
for a more expensive sneaker using these high quality materials that are very expensive, you're gonna want to have these resoles if you wear through the, the, the outsole. And that's really where the durability of leather comes in because fiberboard, if you split that and crack that and someone goes to resole this, they pull the outsole off, the whole shoe could come apart and they've gotta re-last it. So instead of a $30 like cup sole resole, you end up with a whole rebuild. It's gonna cost you three or four times the price. But there's also some other benefits that you've probably heard me talk nonstop about with leather insoles, and that is that it shapes to the shape of your foot. Just like wool, it's naturally antibacterial. It doesn't smell nearly as much. It absorbs your sweat. And keep in mind, that's underneath of the wool lined insole. And they also, these come with two insoles, the, the wool lined one and a, a regular insole, just, just to give you some options and some, if you wanna cool it down a little bit, you put the regular one in there. If you want extra protection and heat, you throw the wool one in there. If you, you can throw your orthotics in there if you need it. But one of my favorite parts of this whole sneaker is that when your foot is in this shoe, with this wool insole in, your foot is completely wrapped in wool. There's nothing on the inside here that's not wool that's touching your foot. But going back to the construction, so another thing that Goral does that I, I don't think anyone else has done on, that we've seen on the channel is they Blake stitch this insole down underneath where the upper is wrapped underneath. And just like we talked about with the resoling, when a cobbler peels this outsole off, there's a, uh, there's a chance that the upper could come undone even if the the lasting board is intact. And so what that Blake stitch does is it sews together that insole to the upper that's wrapped underneath so that when you peel this apart, there's nothing that can come undone unless you pop these huge stitches, which would be pretty tough to do. Most sneakers have one of three ways of being constructed. They're either cemented, they're either a glued cup sole, or they're sidewall stitched. And the crazy thing about Goro is they do all three of them, including the, the Blake stitch. So you can see why we chose it as the most well-built, the most durable sneaker you can buy. It's because they just are so redundant in everything that they do. And there's also a couple of really unique features I wanna go over very briefly. One of them is that we've changed the design to have a gusseted tongue this year, whereas last year it did not. So this, this year we give you a little bit more water protection and it, just in case you get snow on top of your shoe and it melts, it's not gonna sneak into your shoe. It's got a gusset. It has a leather counter instead of like a plastic counter and there's edge binding all the way around the shoe because there was one thing I did not want from this shoe and that was to have shearling popping out of everywhere and like, I wanted this to be as discreet and subtle as possible. I didn't want anyone to know that you were wearing a shearling line sneaker from the outside. I didn't want any shearling showing. And really the last thing is this, this rubber cupsole. You know, most of these cupsoles are really flat and when it's wet and icy, because it's so flat, you kind of hydroplane and you're slipping all over the place. But with these peaks and valleys, it gives you just enough difference in height that it doesn't hydroplane. It gives you a little bit more grip and traction, especially in, in wet and cold conditions. So now let's cut this thing in half. We're gonna cut the brown one though, because there's we also do, last year we did just black. This year we're doing 100 of the brown, 100 of the tan, and 25 of the green. Just some quick sizing information for you. Figure out what your Branock size is. If you don't know how to do that, watch the sizing video be the link in my description. Then take that Branock size, and for US sizes, go one full size up. For UK sizing, just go true to size. So I'm a 10 on the Branock. I'm gonna order an 11 US or a 10 UK, and it's simple as that. All right, we got it cut in half, and if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing, because that's what makes these really fun collaborations possible and what allows us to cut apart several boots a week to show you what you're spending your hard-earned money on. And uh, I'll give you some more information on how to order these at the end of the video. So let's see what's inside. I love the way these sneakers are made. They they really do it about as good as anyone has ever made a sneaker. You know, you've got you've got a couple other layers on the inside there that that we didn't talk about. You have that felted wool that's sourced from Germany, uh, this little yellow layer there, and you also have a, just a tiny layer of fiberboard on the inside there, which I'd rather have leather if I'm being honest. But they say that it it binds and glues better to these other materials than leather does. So 
it is what it is. You gotta have some concessions for the people that are actually making the shoes. And, and now you can really see that gusset in the tongue. You can see how your foot is fully wrapped in shearling. This just looks so cozy. I, I love these sneakers. So did we pull it off? Did we make the perfect cold weather sneaker? I think we did, obviously I designed it, but I just don't think there's any other winter sneakers out there that are as warm, built as well, as good looking, and as discreet as these mugs are. Because that's, those are the, the main things I want. Like I, I don't like having cold feet, and but I, I, I dislike even more wearing giant ugly winter boots or, you know, you try to go on a date and you just, you're just you wearing giant winter boots. This is what I wanna wear. And honestly, I think we pulled it off, but it's very pricey. These are not cheap. And so that kind of leads us to the next question, are they worth the price? Well, if you look at the materials and the labor and the skilled craftsmanship that goes into making these, I think it's worth the price. You know, these are not cheap shoes to make, it's not cheap materials, and even compared to their regular high top sneakers, they're the exact same price, which is important to me because when we do these collaborations, I don't wanna charge a crazy amount of money just because my name's attached to it. I want them to be fairly priced. And, and what that means is Goral makes less money on these collaborative sneakers than they do on their own sneakers that they're selling. And so even from that perspective, I think they're well worth the price. Because as you saw from that the Marquez Brownlee video, people don't like paying extra money just because it's attached to someone else's name. But if you look at it from the standpoint of keeping your feet warm and that's it, there's plenty of other winter boots out there for half the price that are gonna keep your feet warmer. But this, like I said, is a concept shoe made for a very specific purpose, and I think we pulled it off. So let me know what you would have changed or done differently, or if you disagree with any of this. Um, but I think we, we hit the nail on the head with this one. So huge thanks to Goral for making what started off as a ridiculous joke video is, in my opinion, the best cold weather sneaker that money can buy. So a huge thanks to them for letting me just go wild on the design. And especially thanks to the Goral production crew for putting up with making these because it can't be easy making these. And it's gotta just have, there's gotta be shearling all over in the air and in people's noses. So huge thanks to the Goral production crew. They're really who's making this possible. So check these out via link in my description and they're limited quantities. And keep in mind last year they sold out fast, under 24 hours. So make sure you watch the Rose Anvil 2 video with all the additional information, the sizing guide. And like I mentioned, the brown, we're only doing a hundred of these. And if they're sold out and you're watching this, I'm sorry. We can only do so many without completely overwhelming Goral's production. If we could do more, we would. It's not this fake scarcity thing. Uh, but we'll probably do a second drop, uh, maybe December, January, February range once all the existing orders are fulfilled. And hopefully next year we'll be doing the mugs 3.0. So sign up for the limited edition email list below if you missed that or you wanna be uh, notified when the, the mugs 3 drop or all the other collabs because on the limited edition email list, we kind of, uh, a week out, we give you guys all the sizing information, all the specs, everything you need to know to order so that when the, and you get early access, so that when that early access opens, you can get your order in and not miss out on the collaborations because I would way rather have these go to you guys that are like actually interested in these and passionate about these rather than um, people that don't care as much is I guess what I'm saying. So go check out the Rose Anvil 2 video for all your other information and thank you guys for making this possible. It's so fun, I love this so much. It's the designing, the, the angles of it, the concept, working with these, these really cool companies, it's literally a dream come true. So thank you guys, see ya.